Michael Caine, the two-time Oscar winner, was asked once, uh, what is it with money? Uh, what's so great about having all that money? And he said, and very quickly he answered, convenience. He said, you know, how many shirts can I wear at once? But if, let's say I'm living in Beverly Hills, which he no longer does, but used to, uh, if I'm living in Beverly Hills and I get some kooky idea one day that I want to go on an African safari, I just pick up the phone and call my travel lady, and the next day, there I am in Kenya or wherever, uh, and, you know, he said, I couldn't do that if I didn't have all this money. Well, that brings us to, you know, he's right. How many of us could uh, afford to book ourselves an intercontinental flight and then find ourselves on the Serengeti plane uh, within a few hours uh, with or without food and lodging? Not many. Uh, so that brings us to the major subject uh, of today's piece, which is to zoo or not to zoo. There are many people who are passionately against the idea of keeping wild creatures in captivity for almost any purpose, and others who want to regulate every square inch of zoo properties, assuring, hoping to assure that the animals will have at least the bare minimal, minimum of reasonable comforts. I know that cruelty and indifference have always been a part of keeping animals, whether in homes or barns or circuses or even public zoos, and I'm baffled, really, by people passing themselves off as human who would visit this kind of pain on any living creature. But let me be clear, I am a city zoo fan. The handful that I've seen are magnificent, and they seem to do everything possible to make the lives of their captives as comfortable and, okay, I'll say it, natural as possible. The Assiniboine Park Zoo in Winnipeg is right up there on the big list of world zoos, along with London, Barcelona, San Diego, and others. And I mentioned the Assiniboine Park Zoo because as a kid, I spent many, many hours uh, staring with fascination at the polar bears. Now, they had a gigantic enclosure. Granted, not as gigantic as the entire Arctic, but a gigantic enclosure nevertheless with in sections and out sections, and there was a, a giant moat and a big fence around it and so on. Uh, uh, these animals were beautiful, fascinating, and intimidating. On the one hand, they seemed like friendly, cuddable, cuddable, <laughs> cuddly creatures, uh, and, and then it, the occasional glimpse of their teeth and looking at their strength changed all of that. In spite of the basic rule of life, don't fool with Mother Nature, it seems that every few years some wizard will cross uh, the fence and, and uh, try to get in with the bears at home. Result is never good. With great delight, I have seen in zoos all over the world rhinos, elephants, peacocks, giraffes, and so have children, school children from all over the world, pickle. Maybe city zoos are not the greatest idea since time began, but please tell me, what is the alternative?